So the second part of today's lesson asks us to solve systems of equations, and we're going to use the two main methods, elimination and substitution. So the first one works really well with elimination. That's what it's asking us to do as well. So use elimination when x's, y's, equal signs, and constants are all in line. All we have to do is add the equations together, but we need a variable to cancel. So if you add right now, we don't get the three x's to cancel. And so what we need to make, do to make them cancel is just take one of the equations and multiply it by a negative 1. And make sure you multiply every number by negative 1 so that we keep the equation exactly the same line but just a modified form. So it becomes a negative 3x, a positive 2y, and a positive 1. And so when we go ahead and add this stuff together, we get those x's to cancel. You see these x's are now gone, leaving us just with our y term. Negative 2y equals 10. So we're ready to go ahead and solve for y. Divide by negative 2, and we'll have our value for y. And y is a negative 5. So we're just going to take this negative 5 and substitute it. Put it back into one of these equations. I guess I'll put it in this modified form here and see what ends up happening. So when I redo that, I can rewrite the problem as negative 3x plus 2y. But in place of y, I'm putting that negative 5, because that's what y is. And it'll all equal 1 at the end. So we go ahead and do some work there. Negative 3x minus 10 equals 1. And we go ahead and solve. So we'll add the 10 to both sides. And we end up with a negative 3x equaling 11. So we just have one final step. Divide by negative 3. And we've got our answer. So in this case, x equals negative 11 thirds. And so I'll just leave the answer like that. Write it as an ordered pair, though. Negative 11 thirds, comma, negative 5. And that's the point where the two lines end up crossing. So here's another one. This is another one set up for elimination. You see how the x's, y's, equal signs, and constants are in line. But we have the same scenario. See, I can't just add them together because I don't get the y's or x's to cancel. So what I'm trying to do is make either the x's or make the y's the same. When I look at the x's, I just have to multiply this 3 by a negative 3, and I can get those x's to cancel. But I see that each of these terms in that first equation all can be divided by 3. If I divide 9 by 3, I'll get 3. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take this and let's multiply by negative 1 third. That's the same thing as dividing by 3. And so let's divide all those numbers by 3, every single one of them. And so when I do this, 9 divided by negative 3 makes negative 3x. Negative 3y divided by... or divided by negative 3, ends up giving me a positive 1y. And the 3 divided by negative 3 makes a negative 1. See, multiplying by a negative 1 third is the same thing as dividing by negative 3. And so when I do that, I add this stuff together, I get those x's to cancel. And all I'm left with is a 9y equals negative 18. So from that point, we need to go ahead and divide by 9, and we end up with y equaling negative 2. So from this point, we can go ahead and take that negative 2 and substitute it back into the equation. So now we can take this negative 2 and substitute it back into one of the equations. I'm going to select this bottom one here because it has smaller numbers. So I have negative 3x plus 1y. Well, y is negative 2. So I'll just put that negative 2 there and this all equals negative 1. So from that point, I can just move this 2 over. just need to add it to both sides. And I have myself a negative 3x equaling 1. Well, careful in this one. we got another problem that we have a fraction with. And last time it was an improper fraction. Here it's just a regular old fraction. So when you divide by negative 3, it's not 3. It's a fraction. It's negative 1 third. So x equals negative 1 third. So our order pair would be negative 1 third, comma, 
and then we have negative 2. And there is our answer. Well, two more problems. These are solving by substitution. And so substitution is a great method, but when only when x or y is by itself. So you look at this problem, and you see how the equal signs are not lined up. That's a great indicator that substitution might be a better method, especially when we have a variable by itself. So whenever we have x or y by itself, just take what the variable equals and substitute it into the equation below. And you'll end up with an equation with just one unknown. So 2x, but in place of x, put 7 minus 2y. And then plus y equals 5. So we're ready to solve. We go ahead and solve by using the distributive property. And when I do that, I'm left with a 14 minus 4y plus y equals 5. And so from that point, all I need to do is move a term over. Subtract that 14 from all sides. Once I do that, also collect these two terms. Look at the sign in front of the terms, though. If they're opposite signs, you need to subtract. And so I'm left with a negative 3y equals, and this makes a negative 9. And so now I'm ready to divide by negative 3 on both sides. And so I go ahead and do that, and I'm left with y equals positive 3. So I take that 3 and substitute it back into the equation up top, and I'm left with an x equals... 7 minus 2, and then in place of y, I put 3. So I'm ready to go ahead and multiply, and I've got x equals 7 minus 6, which is 1. So there it is. x is 1, while y is 3. So I can write that as an ordered pair. 1, comma, 3. Well, last substitution problem, and this one is an interesting one because... Here, you've got y by itself, but you also have x by itself. So you've got yourself a choice. Do you want to put the expression for x in for x or for y in for y? Well, I'm going to just choose the top one there. Take that negative 3x plus 4 and just put it in place of that y down below. And when you go ahead and do that, this is what we have. x equals, and then we've got a 2 multiplied by the expression y is. Negative 3x plus 4. And then bring down that plus 6. And so you go ahead and just use that distributive property and then isolate the x. And so when you do that, we're left with an x equals negative 6x plus 8 plus 6. So from there, you just move terms around. So we're just going to add that 6x to all sides. And once we do that, we're left with a 7x equals... 14. Well, from there, all we have to do is start moving, or dividing in this case, divide by 7 on both sides, and you've got x by itself. So there it is, x equals 2. So take that 2 and put it in place of the x in that equation above. So what I've got is negative 3 multiplied by 2, and then plus 4 equals y. So negative 6 plus 4 equals y, which is negative 2. So there's your y value, your x value is 2. So we can write the order pair as 2, negative 2. So that's a little review on solving with elimination and substitution.